Hey everyone, it's Eric Jensen again. Uh, so we've had the national championship games um, in the FCS one, North Dakota State one, uh, they blew them out. And then in, uh, in the big one, Georgia finally wins since 1980, more than my lifetime. So uh, good job. Uh, both games were were definitely affected by injury. I mean, the Montana State quarterback goes down, and he, that's it's going to be hard to win after that. Um, although North Dakota State, they they were going to win that game just based on what uh, Montana State couldn't stop them. So uh, that's the story of that one. That wasn't quite as entertaining as I thought it was going to be because it was such a blowout. But uh, the Georgia Alabama game that was good. So I. I, I do think once Alabama lost the one receiver, and again, I, I can't remember her name to save my life, so I'm not even going to try to remember what his name is. But once he went down with the ACL, most likely the ACL, uh, Alabama no longer had that deep threat. And, and I mean, uh, Bryce Young was hitting guys, especially in the end when they were trying to come back. I mean, he, he hit guys in the hands and they just weren't catching it and even though i think you know believe me those are probably five star four star wide receivers top of the you know class guys but sometimes you do need a little bit of experience and when you're thrown into that and you're not used to being the number one guy it's difficult going up against those number one corners georgia has a good defense and and uh and without the number one guys the the weakness of the Georgia secondary wasn't really exposed, and as a result, then uh, then their front could get after Bryce Young. Uh, you know there was some you know controversy on the fumbles versus not fumbles. The first uh, you know f scoop and score that Georgia had that was reversed versus the the one that. Um, whatever his name is, Sten Stenson or whatever, Georgia QB, <laughs> number one, uh, his in the fourth quarter where he was hit and the Alabama guys somehow got it in bounds, the fumble. Uh, I think both were the correct calls. I At first, I thought the Georgia one was was definitely an incomplete pass, but looking at it closely, I mean, as his hand uh, his hand goes forward, the ball isn't in it. Uh, and whenever that's going on, when, you're, when your hand is coming forward a, even a little bit and the ball isn't in it, then it's a fumble. Uh, so I think, they, I think the refs did a pretty good job on, in that game. I, I, uh, I didn't have much complaint from them, uh, which is surprising for most of the <laughs> most of college football season. Uh, of course, I've been watching Pac-12 refs and they, they have the worst, but... Anyways, I digress. So I, I think one thing we can, uh, I can say is again, Nick Saban is still the best coach there is. Uh, I thought it was all class what he did. I, I like how he he pulled um, Young and the defense player that was with them, and he gave them credit for playing hard and having a good season. I I, I really like Nick Saban. I I didn't used to like Nick Saban. And I've grown to really appreciate all the stuff that he does. I, I still think I would rather play for someone like Pete Carroll than Nick Saban. But I, I think Nick Saban, I, I've got a tremendous respect for him. And he is like the best college football coach ever. Uh, Georgia, I, they're, you know, once, once Alabama they couldn't really get that passing game going. Uh, that Georgia defense was good. And overall, I do think Georgia was the better team in the game. I think it might have been different had they, Alabama not had the injuries, but they did. And that's part of football. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Other stuff going on. We've got the NFL. Uh, I mean, I'm going to touch on this. There was the big controversy, not controversy, but the big thing with the, the potential tie between the Raiders and Chargers. You know, and the Raiders who were driving down the field in overtime. If they tie, both uh, the Chargers and the Raiders go to the playoffs. If not, then the Raider, if whoever won the game would go and the Steelers would go. And right at the end... They they um, 
San Diego for some reason, not San Diego, jeez, the Chargers, which I still consider San Diego, but there are the LA Chargers now. They, um, they called the timeout there. And I don't know. I, I know what the idea was to get your right personnel to try and stop the run there. But in that situation, I, I think you've got to be more aware. And I've, I've heard lots of arguments saying that, oh, yeah, you have to get the right guys on. And no, I don't think it changed the Raiders' mindset. I don't think they were going to take a knee or anything. I think they were going to try and run the ball and then kick a field goal. But in taking the time out, sometimes you, that lets the other team get get a st- strategic advantage and and the Raiders took advantage of it they ran it for another what 10 yards there then had the easy easier field goal to hit and that was that was that Raiders in Chargers out and uh it would have been really funny if that would have ended in a tie though and so both would have gone in but I you know good for the Raiders they've gone through a lot this season so uh, it's uh I'll next video I think I'll go over the opening games there I'll, I'll save that for that uh the unfortunately we'll, we'll move over to college basketball today USC lost their first loss so that's disappointing they they just weren't hitting free throws um I got most of the game not not all of it but they uh Stanford was hitting threes and USC wasn't hitting free throws. And that was the difference. And and USC is going to have to be tougher on the rebounding too. I thought that was, Stanford did a good job. I mean, Stanford's one of the few teams that has more size than USC. And I think it showed. I think USC needs to be a little bit tougher uh, inside getting those rebounds. But it was a good effort. Uh, again, i USC never hits free throws, so it's not surprising. And it, the streak had to end sometime. So hopefully they'll turn it around. They've got the Oregon schools, I believe. So but with no fans in attendance, uh, you so ridiculous, so ridiculous. Uh, everything should just be open. Uh, sorry. Now I'll, I will refrain from COVID. Other big news in the college football world is seemingly everyone and their dog is entering the transfer portal. Uh, on the USC side of things, we've got uh, Jackson Dart that's entered and Michael Trigg that entered. Uh, I don't understand it for Trigg. For Dart, I understand, assuming that that means Caleb Williams is coming to USC. If Caleb Williams comes to USC, he's most likely going to win the starting job without much of a competition, which is sort of disappointing because I really want to see Jackson Dart, you know, do with what Lincoln Riley. But I don't blame the guy when there's a coaching change and and the situation that comes in. I, I give a lot of credit if someone would stay, but I'm not going to blame someone for going, especially in today's climate. So if if Jackson Dart does end up leaving, uh, on one of the initial reports, I saw that, you know, he was in the transfer portal, but the option to stay at USC was still open. So I'm still hoping that he'll stay. I Not likely. And I hope he has, you know, all the success in the future. If he goes somewhere, you know, BYU would be interesting, I think, if he went there. Uh, but who knows? But Michael Trigg, I don't understand. I, I understand what he's looking at and seeing that at Oklahoma, the tight end usage wasn't all that high. But I have to believe if you've got a freak in there, a freak athlete, you're going to be getting the the balls. That's sort of like what Drake London was. He Drake London in the beginning was sort of like that tight end sort of wide receiver and turned into being one of the most dominant receivers ever until he got hurt there Uh, and I could see the same thing going with Michael Trigg just because you're you know listed as a tight end I think I mean he's just a a beast I and I would think that they could get him the ball and get him involved and and have him go crazy but but again uh, with the coaching change I'm not going to 
get on anyone when there is a coaching change in trying to find a new place, a new school, some place where they think that fits them best. Uh, the, other than that, I mean, if you're not that, I, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, and something has to, I don't know. <laughs> the the transfer portal and the name and likeness, they're going to have to do something about this and, and regulate it a little bit more. I was listening to some guy in, uh, I think it was Doug Gottlieb, and I agree with him. He was going on and saying, you know, the the schools are actually giving a good deal. You get a free education by going to the school and you have connections for life. If you stay at that school and do it, uh, you're going to have more opportunities than just, oh, here's a million dollars, come here. And that's nice, but as we see athletes, they can burn through that million dollars really quickly. If you go someplace and become part of that, the, there's the job opportunities. There's the, You can go to events all the time and people are like, oh, here is one of our guys. Whereas, you know, why do people like you? It's not really, I mean, some of it is that you're a good athlete, but how many people from Oklahoma are going to be liking Caleb Williams if he transfers to USC? Almost no one. He, he'll have burned all of those bridges and no one will care about him at Oklahoma. Why? Because they care about the school. And, and that's what I think players need to realize a lot of the time. You're getting this money, yes, because you are a good athlete and getting money for the school. But you leave, you're completely replaceable. Uh, most people are fans of the school and then the players that are attending that school, not the players... And then I like the school because of the players. Now, there's some that, that go the other way. I know Reggie Bush, when he was at USC, he made a lot of people USC fans. But for the most part, uh, even in those situations, you go to someplace else, you've lost all these people. And and so I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't have a solution. Uh, but uh, it is wild, wild west out there with college college football players in the transfer portal that can end up making more money than NFL rookies, which which begs to some. I mean, all people have been saying, oh, bowl games are worthless. Well, if you're going to be making more money in college, it might not be worthless. I mean, you go and you play in your college game and you might make a whole lot more money than you could even in the NFL. So... Anyways, I this I don't know if there's some standard thing, but I I'll, I'll try and think of something. I it, it's just a little weird, and I do think that the scholarship is is I, I'm the people aren't aren't valuing that, and I think that should be part of the value of of going to these schools. Anyways, I don't know what I I don't know where I'm going with that. Some some solution to hopefully move signing day back so coaches don't have to leave as early. Uh, I I have to believe that there's got to be some sort of limitation set in the transfer portal. I, I I do agree. Like I said, I, if if your coach changes, I think every player should have the option of going free somewhere else. Uh, I think that's fair, but uh, but some of these transfers, I don't know. I think I think there should still be some sort of penalty, like you have to sit out a year or something. I don't know. That's just me. And uh, name and likeness, I I don't know how to fix it, but it seems definitely like pay to play, and and people that will have the most money will be able to buy the best players. That's what it looks like. It's moving towards to me. And I don't necessarily like that. I mean, uh, lots of people will say it was already like that. And the SEC schools are just paying the, and now it's, uh, now it's just legal to do it. So maybe that, maybe it'll have no effect. But anyways, those are some of my thoughts. We'll preview NFL games coming up later this week. And uh, yeah, have it so good. Bye.